Welcome here everybody, it's Tim the Blacksmith. So this is my Nazel power hammer here and you haven't seen that for a long time because it's been broken and I just haven't had time to fix it even though I've really wanted to get into doing that. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna actually take a look at it, tell you a little bit about it and then we're gonna open it up and see what actually is going on. I don't know what's broken but we gotta take a look at that, see what's going on and then we'll reevaluate, decide how we're gonna fix it. So this is probably gonna be a video one where we figure out what's going on, and then a video two we'll be fixing it. So I'm excited you're here. I'm actually really pumped about getting this hammer running. I love this machine, just the little bit I got to run it, and it'll be really fun to see how it compares to the Beche, nasal versus Beche. Let's get, uh, let's get going, here we go. <laughs> So I bought this hammer in 2016. It's a Nasal 3B power hammer. This is made in America between 1926 and 1944, somewhere within there. What also is interesting about this hammer is it actually has two tags on it, one on the body of the hammer and the motor that says Chevrolet 966 Buffalo, New York. So what I'm guessing is, is that Chevrolet actually had this hammer built for them from Nasal. That's speculation, but I'm just guessing that. This hammer sort of came out of uh, left field for me. I wasn't actually looking for a hammer at the time, but it came available and it was like 20 minutes away from me. Usually, typically, you have to drive all the way across the world to find a power hammer. Foundation requirements for these hammers is pretty tricky. So I was actually able to dig the big hole. It's like five feet deep. It was like 40,000 pounds of concrete that I put in. Before I had bought the hammer, I did get to see it running. I didn't get to run it very much and it had a little bit of a knock in it, which was a little bit worrisome, but the guy said it went away when it warmed up. So once I finally got it set up and running, I got to use it just a little bit. The knock went from a little knock to a big knock, really bad, and then it actually cracked the die on the power hammer. And at that point, I decided I better just stop using it. I'm gonna push this aside for right now. I don't have time to do the rebuild. And then that pretty much brings us up to date now. So before we get into opening up this hammer, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, which is Surfshark. Surfshark is a virtual private network that keeps you safe while you're online from sketchy people. Take a look at how this works. What you do is you download the app and then you simply turn it on and instantly you simply vanish from sketchy people online. Another thing about Surfshark is that it allows you to gain access to content that might not be available in your region. All you do is you go into the app and you just change your location and then you can instantly gain access to all your favorite shows on Netflix, uh, Disney Plus, YouTube or wherever else you watch your favorite shows. So you don't ever have to be worried about not being able to watch your favorite shows because the content's not available in your region. Surfshark is offering 83% off plus three months free if you use a link down below and promo code TIMD at checkout. A huge thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video and keeping us safe while we're online from sketchy people. Let's get this power hammer apart now. Here we go. All right, the first thing I gotta do is get rid of it. So I'm gonna start by trying to get the wedge out here, the die. Shouldn't be too tight because I've actually had it out before. So what I just did is found this piece of 4140 tool steel and I've actually forged it so it just fits in there. Just gonna let it cool off a little bit and that'll be my punch now to drive that wedge out. So I just got a jack on the back here. Just gonna jack this ram up a little bit so I can pull the die out. So here's the die, and uh, also this part is missing. What this is is there's a pin that sits in here that goes up into the ram to keep this from sliding out. If this would ever come loose and slide out and go up, you'd kind of self-destruct your hammer. So we're gonna have to make that up. And then uh, this is a gong show. Shims, wedges, hate that. All right, so we're on top of the hammer here. This is the iconic cone, it's the muffler. 
on a nasal power hammer. Kind of a weird design, but they're always very distinguishable because of that. So anyways, we're gonna take this off. We're gonna take all of these off. And I think that's gonna be it from the top side. Okay, let's do it. Okay, here we go. Oh. All right, all right. So here's the top, this is the cone off. And uh, I think actually down there, inside that thing, that's where we gotta get to. But from the other side, but from inside, if that makes any sense, it doesn't. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but we gotta take this out. Not very tight. So these were all really loose. So that's interesting. Okay, ready to lift this thing off. So I just made this pulling thing here, this hook, I guess. See if my holes line up, if I'm any good at that. So my dad's volunteered some of his uh, help for this project. So everybody say, hi, dad. He's gonna be driving this bad boy for us. So we're gonna try to use this to hook onto here and pull her up. Beauty. Just right in. So here's what's going on, is we've tried to come along. It's pulling the excavator over. And I'm wondering if somebody has put Forma gasket, which is basically this rubber sealant to seal it, all just around this and drop this thing down. And because it's so heavy and there's so much surface area, it's basically glued down. So I can still get my hand on there, so it's not crazy hot. Probably not hotter than operating. Yeah, there she goes. Beauty. I don't know if you can see this in there, but you can actually see the gasket material like glue. Wow. Whoa. So All right, this is the first look here. So we definitely have worn parts here because you can see there's no groove in this section here where it should be all the way through that. So we'll have to look at that. This one is, oh yeah. A little bit of scoring in here and then you can see it up here as well. And then this is the business end here that we're gonna have to do some work on and I'm not sure what this all means here. But anyways, that's that part. I guess this was the sealant that was giving us troubles, hey? It's such a thin layer. Man, that's crazy how that stuff sticks. Oh, yeah, look at the cylinder wall. It looks really, any scoring? None. I don't see any. Oh, that's really good. Beautiful. So next up is we're gonna take the ram out, so we're just gonna jack it up to get a head start here on lifting it out from the top. Woo! I got that just right. All right, bring her up. Right, so check it out. This is the ram. First impressions for me is that I'm actually really happy. There's, from the outside, it looks really good shape. Blowing away that there's no rings in here. That's so crazy. That means it's just a, like a tolerance fit that keeps it from sealing with the oil. The beche has rings on that. Well, actually, you know, I've never had that out. Maybe it doesn't. Anyways, that's surprising. Um, and then now we can start to see. So this is where the die sits. I've shown you earlier, this part is loose or broken. This is where that pin sits that holds the die in that I'm missing. And then just so maybe you didn't catch this, this part here 
rides on the inside of this in here. And um, you can see the wear on this bushing here. And that comes from the ram going sideways. And that's probably because it wasn't correctly shimmed on this side or just natural wear. Hammer kicking this way, right? So not as bad as I was thinking it could be, but definitely not quite sure what exactly we're looking at here yet. All right, so I'm gonna drop this down now. So we've just got this set up with the chain through here to the bucket. And now we're gonna plan to drop this part off. Don't know how heavy it is, maybe 150 or 200 pounds, I don't know. So anyways, hopefully this will go easy. We'll see. Bring her down. Yeah. Okay, so we got the seals in here. Pretty sure this is actually supposed to be leather seals. I'll talk to Mark about that. Mark Krause, but I think somebody has just stuck in big old O-rings. Look at that, which is just ridiculous. This is, oh, that one's completely broken. And uh, that's the parts. So now we just got to start uh, working through what we got to do here. Happy? Interesting. So I'm just looking at this part here. This is totally wrong, because that's whatever's supposed to happen. It's supposed to be a toothed out gap. And uh, there's no other bushing, so. Oh wait, what's this? Is that a broken drill bit in there? And there's like holes or two parts here? This is a mess. So I just got off the phone with Mark Krause, and uh, Mark fixes these hammers, like specializes in these hammers. Just spent an hour talking to him. Boy, my mind is overloaded with stuff that he said about the hammer. I'm not quite sure where that leaves me right now. I gotta figure that out a little bit, or I might have to get some stuff. But yeah, there's a lot of work to be done here for sure. This part here is totally wrong. This is all supposed to be out of bronze, but how it goes in is it, it, it is right. It gets pushed in, and then this is actually right too, that there's no part missing here. And then he said that these parts here are supposed to be steel rings, ductile iron actually, so cast. And then over here, this is supposed to be leather seals, leather seals in here, and then this needs to go through and get cleaned up, the guides, and then this too is a, a repair at some point on the hammer, so I gotta spec that to see what that tolerance is. So anyways, um, that's it in a nutshell. So what I'm gonna do right now is sit down and try to write some stuff out and make a plan and decide what I'm gonna do and then decide if I'm going to attack this now or just use this as uh, understanding what I have to do in the hammer and then put it back together and just leave it until I can set more time aside. So I'm going to just do that now and then we'll go from there. So after looking at all these parts, closer inspection and everything, pretty much every single part I'm going to have to do some work to. I might look at sending some out of house and we'll do some here, but for right now I'm going to actually end this video and then part two, I'm not sure when that's coming out, we'll be sort of rebuilding all these parts. So huge thank you to you for watching this video. I hope this is interesting to you. I'm really excited about having this hammer back up and running and also repairing it. Thank you to all my Patreons coming alongside and helping me be able to do what I love to do and build these videos. Also next week, Friday, we're gonna be doing it, releasing another drop of axes, which super excited about as always. A huge thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Make sure to use the link down below to get 83% off plus three months for free. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.